Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. Today we obviously had the Fed basically decline to increase interest rates, which was nice to see. We also had BitFarms provide their production update for October along with Cypher. We're also going to take a look at my prediction from earlier this year as far as where Bitcoin could be by the end of this year. We're surprisingly pretty close to where I think we might end up at the end of the year. So we'll look at that. We'll look at everything else. And as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. And I'm invested in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously as always. Also hit the notification bell. That way you get notified when I put out new videos. So let's take a look at what's going on here with... First, we'll take a look at my prediction here from earlier this year. This was probably from around February of this year. Um, I had Bitcoin going up to about 42000 by the end of this year. We're at 35000 and some change right now. In November, uh, I had November being at 39000 so we're pretty close to that, actually. I'm quite surprised at how close we are on this. Uh, this was based on the metrics that we've had before, the prior cycles, before the hanging event, all of that stuff being added into it came pretty close to that. So I'm really surprised, uh, happily surprised that we got it this close. The only thing is the network hash rate for Bitcoin, uh, I'm way off. I'm by, off by about 100 exahash on the increase. We saw a huge increase here that we saw obviously in the Bitcoin network over the past year. Most of it was actually driven by not the miners that we cover, but from the outside miners that are non-public in other countries that we don't track, things like that. That was a huge increase, I thought. We were going to be probably around 350 exahash in network hash rate um, by the end of December. So that's way below where I thought it was going to be. So I got to work on my numbers for that going forward. But that's always tough to know where things are going to go because we don't really know how much the other money is going to be growing. So this was kind of best guess estimate on here. But nonetheless, Bitcoin price, we're pretty close to that. We were also really close last year as far as where we might end up in the bear case for Bitcoin towards the end of 2022. I had it coming down to like 13,500. We ended up at 15,500. I was off by 2,000 on that one. So really happy with so far the data that I'm having on Bitcoin price. Going forward, we'll see how we can, well, we'll look at it in a couple months possibly in January or February as far as where Bitcoin could go with the bull run happening, with the having event, everything else where things could end up. We'll do some more math on the charts and things like that. We'll take a look at it there. But just wanted to point this out to you guys. This was obviously back in probably around February, I'm guessing, that I recorded this video. And if you guys want to take a look at it, that was uh, titled My 2023 Bull Case Prediction for Bitcoin Miners. And that's what I used there. Obviously, the price prediction is nowhere near as far as where things have happened because what we had happened was, which I kind of thought might happen, but I wasn't sure, was the miners actually went down here ever since mid-July or something like that, beginning of July, mid-July, and they've been coming down ever since then, down about 50% from where they really should be because of the heavy event, which is going to cut their uh, production and revenue in half. All right. But next, obviously, is going to be the Federal Reserve here. So Federal Reserve holds interest rates at highest level since 20, uh, 2001, which was kind of what a lot of the analysts were thinking was going to happen, which was good to see. Also, Bitcoin, because of it, uh, was kind of holding its range a little bit here. And then after the news came out, after the uh, Fed Powell spoke, Bitcoin actually ended up going up higher on today's chart so that was good to see and we're up a little bit more uh right now in the new day so we're at 35,529 which is really good here we had a nice bump here and right around the three o'clock hour this would be central standard time which was good to see as well prior to that we could see that we were actually coming down on the price before the speech in the morning and then it started going back up 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 we had a little down here then we went up obviously higher afterwards so that's good so this kind of leads us to where we might possibly go up to 38,000 might be our next support line here. Let's take a look at it here really quick. Uh, if we look at it on the daily. We can see here that prior to that, let's see, right around 37,400 uh, 37, is our next support line possibly. After that, it would be right around the 40,000 mark. So we got those things to look forward to, but we'll see how things continue going forward. Okay. Now, Let's take a look at the Bitcoin miners here as far as what they reported here for October production. The first one is going to be BitFarms, which earns 398 BTC in October of 2023. We'll go over some of the things here. Uh, we'll go over a quote. Uh, this is a quote from uh, Morf Morphe. Uh, we've stated, we've, sorry, we've been steadfast this year in increasing our financial flexibility and strengthening our balance sheet while executing our 2023 growth plan. We have cost-effectively grown our hash rate and farm infrastructure while prudently paying down debt, 
Our discipline strategy of carefully timing fleet upgrades has embedded optionality as the next generation miners coming to market now could generate dramatic production increases at our existing state-of-the-art facilities. In short, we are well positioned to invest for the remainder of 2023 and into 2024 and take advantage of disruptive opportunities around the April having Eddie Murphy. So that's really good there. And when we look at the production here, like the title st uh, stated, 398 Bitcoin were produced in October. Month end, their hash rate is at 6.3 exahash, and they sold 341 Bitcoins uh, during the month of October. Going down here, we can see here that they added 57 BTC to Treasury, increasing HODL to 7, or 7, 760, sorry, representing approximately 26 million based on BTC price of 34,000 at the end of October 31st. They also initiated um, our synthetic HODL strategy with the purchase of 35 long-dated uh, BTC call options. So they're basically betting on Bitcoin going up in value. Um, and they're, they purchased 35 Bitcoins on because of it. So that's kind of interesting to see that they are actually hedging their bets here going forward. And then they reduced total outstanding indebtedness by 1.9 million, resulting in remaining balance of 7.9 million at October 31st, 2023. So this is actually really good as well because last year they had over 100 million in debt and they've spent pretty much the last year and then a couple extra months into it. So about 14 months or so paying down that debt and they've paid down a large, large portion of it. And they're almost out of debt, which they should be out of debt. Um, if they continue paying down just 2 million a month, they should be out of debt within the next four months, which would be right before the having event. So this is really good news there. Okay, and I think that's it for it. Let's take a look at the numbers that I do have for them. And we'll call it a, well, that in Cypher still, and we'll call it a day. So shares outstanding for Bit Farms right now is at $258 million, But we should get an update sometime next week when they report their Q3 results. We'll see how many shares are outstanding at that point. But stock price obviously went up today a little bit here to uh, $1.10. Market cap is at $284 million right now. They've had okay performance here the last four weeks and last week as well. But they're still down from 12 weeks ago. They're down 30% from there. And then from eight weeks ago, they're down 9.8% from that, okay? When we look at their BTC huddles, uh, 7,000, or so, oh, geez, 760, right? Do I have that right? 760, yep, okay. 760, that's value of 22 million right now. BTC production here month over month has been increasing here slowly uh, over since basically July. And we actually went down a little bit here in October to 398 from 411 in September. Right. The one thing that impacts that is obviously the network hash rate. Network hash rate has increased over 9% in the last month or in October. They only increased their production uh, or their hash rate by like 2% or something like that. So they didn't keep up with it. That's why their uh, production is down for that. Here you can see their month over month difference from BTC mined. They were down 13, 13 Bitcoins less than the prior month. BTC HODL has been increasing here ever since December of last year. They had almost 2,000. Well, they had a little bit over 2,000 in October of last year, right? It's, uh, and they're at 760 right now. That's basically one-third of what they had back then. And then when we look at their BTC per exa hash efficiency, I'm at 63. That has also been coming down, and that's because the network hash rate has continued to increase. And we're seeing the same results for the other miners, and their uptime has been pretty good as well. BTC sold here has been kind of in line. They've been selling about 300, um, I'd say maybe 350 or so on average here over the last pretty much this whole year now to uh, to get to the where they are right now paying down debt and everything else when we look at their hash rate hash rate has continued to increase here steadily over the last 12 months as well which is good to see they were at 4.2 exahash last year they added another 2.1 exahash over the past 12 months which is good and then their revenue here as far as how that has been uh, doing over the last year it is over from where it was last year. They had 9.55 million from October of last year, and they're at 11.78 million in October of this year. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Excuse me about that. I'm getting over a cold. Uh, hash difference. You can see how much they've increased hash rate over each month. BTC sold value, how much they sold each month here as well. Last four quarters revenue. We're still waiting on, obviously, the Q3 results. We'll get this updated when that does happen. We'll go over it at that point. When we look at the institutions and the analyst ratings, institutions did increase here to 123 from 119, so that's good there. Uh, shares also increased to 41.5 million from 40.5 million, so about 1 million more shares are owned by institutions. That went up to 15.17% of the company's shares owned by institutions. 
They still have only two buy ratings on them. Same price targets of $3 for the high, $3 for the average, $3 for the low. And then during the month here, it looks like they generated revenue of around 11.777 million, which is an increase obviously from September, even though they mined less, but Bitcoin price has gone up in value, which has helped them out there. As far as what they had running here at the end of October here, they had pretty much all the miners here. We did, I did change out some miners here. So I think I, I think I did this, I did an update on this when they reported their growing their hash rate. But nonetheless, we took out all the older miners, the less efficient ones, the 80 terahash, the 90 terahash, the 91 here. And we substituted those for some of the newer miners that are being brought in. And those were all running for 31 days roughly. And then some of these were running for 24, 7, and then 8 days here, the newer ones that were brought in to get into the 6.3 exahash. Uh, and that got us to the 11.777 million here in revenue, which is right on right on the book here. Okay, next up here, looking at the price targets here for them as far as what I have them at. Now, given what I have them at is where I think they should be valued at, but doesn't mean that this is where they're going to be valued at based on investors, the having event coming up, right? So they're being heavily discounted, not only them, but also a lot of the miners here because of the having event, which is going to reduce their revenue by 50%. So I have them right now at $5.19 here and $7.79. If we're looking at the last, we're looking at the current quarter that we're in right now, which is Q4. We're looking at the estimated Q3 numbers along with the actual numbers for Q2 and Q1. Okay. So that's kind of what we're looking at as far as that. That's where I have them at their $1.10. I think they're way undervalued right now. And then if we look at future uh, revenue based on the October numbers for revenue times the five months before that event at 100%, and then the seven months afterwards at 50%, I have them at $3.88 to $5.81, right? That's with Bitcoin being basically where it's at right now. So I definitely think that they are still way, way undervalued from where they should be. And then if Bitcoin continues to go up in value before the event, maybe gets closer to... 44, 45, 50,000, something like that. They definitely should be in a lot better position. And then after the having event, we know a couple months later down the road, four to six months, Bitcoin usually goes into a nice parabolic bull run. All right. So at that point, we might reach 150, 200,000, who knows? Um, but that's kind of the estimate that I have on it right now. Okay. So overall, a pretty good month for them. The increased revenue, Bitcoin went up in value. That's the reason why. The increased hash rate a little bit low, uh, well, their increase was a little low. I'd like to see them increase their hash rate going forward into the having event as well. But other than that, I think it was just a good, great month for them. They did all the right things, paid down debt, increased hash rate, and their operational uptime is really good as well. So no really qualms from me at least. All right, so that's that one. And let's take a look at Cypher here. So Cypher Mining announces uh, October 2023 operational update. This is going to be pretty quick. They didn't provide a lot of data here. So BTC mine was 428. Power sales equivalent BTC was a 16. So when I do the math here on my spreadsheet here, the, uh, how can I explain this? It seems like they might be including the 16 here in the 428. Uh, even when I do that, when I reduce that to the 412 Bitcoin for the self-mining, I still have to add additional revenue to them. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on here with them. And that one, BTC sold was 466. BTC held was 516. So it's actually a decrease from what they had in September. And their month-end operation hash rate was 7.2x to hash, which is the same as they had in September as well. Uh, they will be providing their uh, Q3 report on Wednesday, November 8th. That's going to be next week. So basically in seven days. We're going to have a lot of updates happening here in the next couple of days. So you guys want to stay informed on all this stuff hit the notification bell, subscribe, and you'll get notified of it when I do provide a video on it. Okay, so that's it, I think, from that one. Let's take a look at the numbers that I do have for it. Let's see here, Cypher is right here. They have 254.8 million shares, roughly outstanding. We'll see what they actually come up with at the end of Q3 here. Their price right now is $3.50. Market cap is at $890 million, uh, which is definitely a lot higher than where Bitforms is right now. Bitforms is at 6.8 three they're at 7.2 so not too far behind but you can see the difference in the market hash rate or the market cap on these companies here they have done pretty good here in the last eight four weeks and one week they're up 27 percent last week they were up 24 uh, percent from four weeks ago and up 10 percent from eight weeks ago so that's pretty good they're only down 9.5 percent from 12 weeks ago their current hodl is 516 that's valued about 15 million and their btc production has been going up here which is nice to see as well it kind of bottomed out here a little bit at 
in August of 357. I think they did a, quite a bit of curtailment during that time frame. You can see their month-over-month -month production here, as well as you can see from last year, they had only 60 BTC that they mined. So that's a nice increase here, uh, 428 uh, this year. Okay, BTC HODL has been increasing here. Like I said, in September, they had 553, went down a little bit to 516. Uh, BTC per exa hash efficiency is at 59.4 for them in October. BTC sold value, or how much how many Bitcoins they sold each month. And they've been averaging approximately, since they started selling here, um, in January, they've been averaging, I would say, probably closer to about 350 or so, closer maybe to 375, something like that, on average. So they definitely sold more than they average normally would have. And then here's their hash rate growth. You can see here in December when we started tracking them, they were at 2.8, and they've had a nice run up here in the last, well, the beginning of the year, basically, through June. So the first six months had a nice run up here. They reached 6.7, they got to 6.8, they were stuck there for a couple months, and they got to 7.2 here in September and October. And they're um, holding steady there right now. The revenue has also been increasing here nicely. They were only at 1.18 million in October of last year. This year, they're at 12.67 million. And that may, might be why the stock is where it's at right now. It's uh, valued a little bit more from what Bitfarms was. Okay, hash rate difference. You can see how much they were increasing their hash rate each month over a month. BTC sold value. They sold actually more here, 13.76 million worth of Bitcoins than they actually mined here. So, uh, that's a little concerning there. Not sure what's going on there, but we'll have to find out, obviously, when they report on it later on. Okay, last four quarters revenue. We'll take a look at that when they do report next week. And let's see here. Let's go down here. Analyst ratings. So institutions and analyst ratings, we have 127. So two more increased here in, from October. But the number of shares actually went uh, down slightly, about 50,000 shares less. It's now at 18,510,000 compared to the 18,560,000. And the percentage is down to 7.38. We do have, however, one extra analyst rating here on them. So we have three strong buy ratings like we did before, three buy ratings, and now we have one hold rating, which we didn't have that before. And the price target is still the same as it was at $6 for the high, $5.25 for the average, and $4.50 for the low on that one. And then let me take point this out to you guys. So based on what they reported, 428 Bitcoin at the Bitcoin average price for October, we have at 12.6 uh, million here in revenue, potentially. And then when we look at the numbers for October here, I had all the miners that they had reported here running at basically 31 days, 100%, and I still had to add 565,000 into their balance or into the revenue side of things to get to the 12.665 million, which is what we have here based on the average. Uh, unless they ended up selling everything towards the end of the month where Bitcoin price was much higher, obviously, at that point. Uh, and then the Strange, or not the strange thing, but the important part of it is Odessa is 100% fully owned by them. They have Alvarez, Bear, and Chief, which are 49%. So they have a joint venture on those three there. So they only get 49% of the Bitcoin that are mined there. Those are not reported as revenue. Those are reported as assets for them. Okay. But nonetheless, this is what we have. So I'm trying to figure out why they're... Usually you can see here that it's been right on the money here as far as what they've been mining here and revenue. Not sure why we're getting, um, having to add miners in here. So, like I said, on the amount that they provided here for the production, I don't know if something's being added in here or if they're including also what they mined for the joint venture in there as well, which could be the case. I just don't know it. They're, it's hard to tell. Okay. So, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt here as far as what's going on here on that one because I really don't know why I had to add 565000 for them. Okay. Now, when we look at the numbers here for them, here's my estimates for them right now. As always, we're looking at the last three quarters, which includes the Q2 numbers for them, which are an estimated number. We'll get those results, or sorry, Q3 numbers, which are estimated numbers. We're also looking at Q2 and Q1 in there as well, which are actual numbers. And then we're including as well the current quarter that we're in, which is obviously Q4 here that we're tracking as well. So that, that one's an estimated as well. Based on that, we got them at $4.74 to $7.11. I think they're slightly undervalued right now. Uh, and then when we look at the future revenue possibility here at going to 12 months from... Ah, again, let me restart that. But looking into the future revenue potential here, we're looking at October revenue side of things, multiplying it by the five months before the having event, and then the seven months of 50% after the having event. I have them at $4.23 to $6.34, which leads me to believe that they are still undervalued based on that, right? As we've seen with other miners here, they were uh, 
reduced in value because of the having event coming up, which I believe is the case. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see how things progress going forward. Um, it's hard to tell right now where things are going to end up. Bitcoin's going up a little bit here. Miners didn't do too well today. We'll see if they're going to be lagging Bitcoin until the having event and then until after some time Bitcoin reaches probably closer to 60, 65,000 before the miners actually start popping pretty good here as they did last cycle, right? Uh, but yeah, right now they're doing all the right things, I think. They still have a little bit of hash rate to increase, right? They're supposed to get to 7.3. They're at 7.2 right now for the self-installed. And I'm using the 6.247, which is, which number is that one? That's why it gets a little tricky with them. Let me see here. November, October, 6.24. Odessa. So I'm using the Odessa numbers here, but they have 7.2 basically fully installed. So they might be using the Bitcoin numbers for that as well from the joint venture, which could possibly make sense here as far as why we're off by this. All right. Uh, and that's it. Otherwise, yeah, they need to continue to grow. They have, let me take a look at their balance sheet here. Their balance sheet is still strong here. They have more assets than they had uh liabilities so that's good we'll see how that changes going into q3 numbers that we get next week but other than that they just need to continue to grow um, keep expenses as low as possible and we'll see for them okay so that's it for the miners let me know what you guys think on them for cypher and bit farms and let's take a look at what they actually happened with today with bitcoin here a little bit bitcoin's still up right now uh, on daily on the new day it's up a little bit more here we're at thirty five thousand six hundred, so that's kind of our previous peak here was around 35,150 roughly. We did bypass that, so that's good to see there. And then when we look at the daily lines and the weekly lines, we can see that we are way above those right now as it is. The RSI on the daily is also pretty high up there right now. So we can bring that down here a little bit. There we go. Uh, it has come down a little bit here over the last couple of days, but it has continued to increase, which isn't too bad. We can continue to do that, right? We can continue to go... Up, come back down in price a little bit well then the price goes back up and we can kind of bounce around here a little bit longer i think on the weekly when we look at it rsi is still pretty low here and especially when we get into a bull run it can go for a lot longer out in this range here as well so not a big deal there the four hour chart has been coming down as well which is good to see here the rsi but the price has actually been going up here which is also great to see so i love seeing that and when we look at the one hour chart we can see the same thing on that one where we had the RSI much higher here than we are right now with price actually being up higher. So that's a good sign as well. So I think there's a lot of good things going in for Bitcoin as it is. And then the miners here today, they had a kind of mixed day. They were up in the morning. Bitcoin was up in the morning as well, but then it came down a little bit here during the morning hours and then finally bounced in the afternoon hours. And the miners didn't actually get to benefit from that because, well, stock exchange closed at 3 o'clock. And that's all we got out of the miners here. But we do have a lot of miners that were in the green here. Some sizable ones that were down here was Annie was down 7%. Argo was down 4%. Uh, who else was down quite a bit here? Uh, Saluna was down just a little bit along with Stronghold. So we'll keep an eye on this, see how things go. And we'll see what else we can come up with as far as metrics going forward. But we are going to get a lot of bunch of updates uh, from the miners for our October production. And then next week we're going to start getting the actual Q3 results, which is going to be interesting to see how things progress going there. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. I think we're going to probably get Clean Spark tomorrow. Uh, we may get Marathon in there as well. We'll see. Uh, Terror Wolf, Iris Energy as well, possibly. So we'll have a full full basket of things to talk about tomorrow on the mining production side of things as well. All right, so I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye.